Hit me red. Hit me blue. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 House. That's what they sound like. That's that's exactly how Blackjack is played. Mm. I can tell you spent a lot of time in Vegas. Yeah. You know, like the old like film voice, the old film, the old radio voice, like. Ah, uh, he's coming to the rear, uh, da 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 I know, uh, oh, here he is, no, yep, yep, uh, oh, gonna be, gonna bloody mystery. Yeah. That one. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find, it's spot on. That quote's actually from Moby Dick, oh, the 1940 one. Uh, but apparently the reason for that was, is, is that all, like, radio producers in, like, America and England, they were trying to have, like, a neutral accent, whatever the mm. country was, like, a neutral accent, it would be, like, oh, we're going to the freeway. Received pronunciation. Not that posh, but, like, in the middle, mm. sort of more in the middle. Yeah. Um, in fact, and that was part of it was that, and part of it was because the old port broadcasts they didn't have any bass on them, mm. so it was all just the higher pitch. It was all nasal, and all like you're talking from this. There's no flaw to the voice at all, um, which is why it sounded like that. I completely forgot that Vincent Price was the voice of the bad guy in Basil the Great Mouse Detective. Oh yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, it's fantastic. But it's one of those things where it's like I've seen that film. Mm. I must have been aware of that fact, and then I forgot it, <laughs> so that I could learn it again and be like. Give you more joy. That's totally Vincent Price, yes. Well, the thing is, they worked out like some of the body language of his character mm. by watching him do these great big Shakespearean uh, okay. sort of voice acting bits in the booth. He could like, and now I will destroy you, as they just drew him like that. And these, yes. like, oh, fantastic. Do you think that's worked for any other animated characters? Oh yeah, they do it all mm. the time. Like when Danny DeVito did the mocap for Wally. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Basically, I mean, people say Andy Serkis is pretty good, but I think Danny DeVito in the mocap world is mm. underrated. Definitely. Mm. You know he's Smaug, the third one. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Benedict's come back. He's Doctor Strange now. They can't afford yeah. him. Gone off. Get into Vito. He's like a little. He's like one of those fish that sort of swims like in the jet stream of sharks. She's picking up little scraps. He's like that for acting all over. Like Renee Zellweger. Now she's got the. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be doing a lot of her past work. Uh, Steve Buscemi. Bridget Jones Three is gonna be a very different film. It's gonna be a better film. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen? I've never seen a Bridget Jones film. I, I don't know if I'm missing out. I've here. seen the. I have seen both of them actually. I saw the first one, loads of times because it came out at exactly mm. the right time for me because I was a fourteen year old girl when the film came out. So and it was like chronology is Bridget Jones Diary. Yeah. Bridget Jones: The End of Reason. Yeah. And there's now a new Return book. of the Sith. No, no, there, there is a, actually a Bridget Jones three book, which is mad. Oh, okay. Bridget Jones mad about a boy. Not mad about the boy because that's or a about different a boy. book. Yes, right. it's a combination of two other titles of incredibly popular things. Oh my god! Can we do like a sequel? It's a crossover between about a boy and Bridget Jones. It's like the Avengers of romantic. Because Notting Hill can come in there. But somewhere. no, hang on a minute, because it'd be great. Because he's Hugh Grant is in both of those films. Same character. <laughs> yes, same character. So you have Kathy Burke as the little boy's mum. She and Bridget, they, they meet, they become friends. And she meets this little boy's like weird foster, not dad. And they hit it off. But the little boy's, it's like a love triangle, but one of them is a child. Of course. And Colin think... Firth turns up at the end and says, it's called the Avengers Initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Have we explained the Avengers Initiative on camera? I think it's... Like, I think it's self-explanatory. Yeah. Yeah. Joke, just like I, I, it's become my new favorite thing, just to describe scenarios involving fictional characters and bring them into the expanded Avengers universe. Mm. It so started. It started off just as can you improving films by having a post-credit sequence in which Nick Fury turns up and invites them to join the Avengers. But it's kind of spun out into. Yeah, I really want like all films to have post-credit sequences <laughs> now. I think that's just good. Yeah, it like, should be. Yeah. yeah, I'm not so convinced about the post-credits thing though, because if it mm. was all Samuel L. Jackson. That would be fine, but clear, with X Men: Days of Future Past, they clearly felt well. They are superhero -y kind of a Marvel thing, so people will expect a post credit thing. So we should put mm. something in. But it wasn't very good. It well, was no, if, you, if you don't force it, you do, it's when you're doing it without a plan. The, the, the post credit thing it sort of requires a continuing. Continuity. One of my favourite post credit moments is actually in Monsters University, mm -hmm. which is where. Like, Where Nick Fury shows up no, and says, I it's wish. called the Avengers in That would work so well, but it's not <laughs> that, unfortunately. Do you know who's doing the mocap for Sully in the new Monsters is it, film? Is it, is it Danny DeVito? DeVito? No, it's Renee Zellweger. Ah, oh, oh. She's enough. become Danny DeVito's scrapfish. Oh. It's like a little... A chain like, of scrapfish. Remember that painting of like, it's like, is it like a little fish going to eat a worm? And there's a bigger fish behind it, bigger mm. into the... It's like that bit in reverse. Mm. Mm. Nice. Thank you. Painting a picture with words. Not this. Don't, don't be fighty, does it? 
you can just use your words sometimes. Go on. Monsters University. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like throughout they have various. Uh, visual gags and references mm. to the American college system and how utterly broken the American college system is Ugh. and how it completely destroys people's lives. But because they're all monsters, they can do things like they have a monster with three mouths who's drinking coffee and then like he's got one head drinking coffee and one head looking in a uh, textbook and the other head like frantically taking notes and just sort of okay. like stressing out. And there's the sort of slug beast creature. Okay. The the bell rings, everyone runs off to class, he's like, Oh no, I'm gonna be late on my first day oh, just... And then runs like does the super running arms, but because he's a slug, he's moving like oh. so slowly. <laughs> which is a funny joke and then yeah. the film carries on and da 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 da. There's all the credits and then at the end of the credits it just cuts to an empty classroom with the uh, janitor like mopping the floors. And the slug guy comes in, he's like, I made it, I'm ready for my first day. And the janitor doesn't even look up, he just goes, school year's over. And the guy's like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. Oh. It's great because it, it's a payoff to what didn't seem like it was it, it was going to be a recurring joke. How's your tattoo? I'm trying to work out the dressing slip down. Now we're good. Okay. That, that no, that's dressing. skin, mm -hmm. that's skin. No. I should pop that back on. Uh, that tin foil dressing last night, that was a horrific idea. Yeah, yeah. Good job. I bet turns you out, it, you can't use tin foil to cover a fresh tattoo. It turns out, who would have thought, I mean, I thought it would be a Spider-Man scenario, would result in superpowers. Ooh, the boy with metal for skin. Marvel 2022. Alumanium. <laughs> What I really want to do is I want to just get films, you know those Channel 4 medical documentaries mm. where it's like, oh, the boy with hands for hands. Ones <laughs> yes, like that. Yeah. I want to get ones like that. I should start sending them as pictures to Marvel. <laughs> so we we'll get the boy whose skin fell off. DC's doing the whole, like, everything must be dark, muted tones and we must all have tragic backstories yeah. and, and punch yeah. things in the face repeatedly and be angry and violent. For better or worse, they decide to anchor themselves yeah. to Christopher Nolan. Yeah, which... Mm. Which is a very specific style of filmmaking. Which, which works yes. for Batman and I feel not so much for Superman. Not it... so much for anything yeah. with a female character. No, that too. But um... Christopher Nolan, he's just the worst at female characters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But, um... It's such a shame, because I was thinking, like, he's got that new film coming out at the moment, it's like... It's, it's Stella. Yeah, oh. and it's just a shame of he's gone from being one of my favourite directors to the more films he comes out, the less I want to see any of his films, including mm. the ones I love from the past. Because I thought Memento was amazing, and I still think it's a great film, but having yeah. seen enough of his, like... The Prestige. I just, great. Great film. I just want to, him to bring out one film which isn't about a grim, gritty guy who's held back by women and needs to learn to just put them I behind him. I don't need him. to do that, though. I don't but really just understand. once, because it's making all the films I me, used to like. Or is yeah. the only thing that's separating Christopher Nolan's work from Tommy Wiseau's work <laughs> a big budget? A lot of it, that's... yeah. <laughs> no, also, that's a little bit The hard. budget and the ability to work within a studio system. <laughs> There is yeah. that, yes. Tommy Wiseau had six million dollars. He's not missing Fair budget. Point. Oh my god! But, yeah. We, you, you saw the photos, didn't you? Which ones? Uh, when we were in San Francisco, oh, we were walking the, around the waterfront yeah, the... and we just suddenly saw the room poster and Tommy Wiseau's face above a massive, like, a, a massive mannequin of a pair of jeans and we're like, holy crap, that is Tommy Wiseau's own jeans shop. We have found Mecca. I couldn't look at it. It was terrifying. Just oh. his face, like sixty foot tall. I was just like, she wasn't able to like... walk past it until the following day. I had to she was just so look freaked at the out. You know what it reminded me of in the photos? Have you ever seen like those pictures from nineteen forties fascist Italy? Like, have you seen like um, what's what's the what's the fascist Italian leader's name? Mussolini. Not, not Pavarotti. Look, Mussolini. <laughs> when Pavarotti was the fascist leader of Italy. Yes. Uh, we Mussolini's headquarters. Uh, like the exterior of the building was this giant like carven stone version of his big bold face mm. and just uh the wall was painted into a recurring motif of just c c c c c c c c c mm. just yes 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 it was like full-on big brother it reminded me a lot of that yeah, I, yeah i've never felt like i was being bad touched by a building before but now <laughs> i have i've had that experience and the thing is the trousers were right there so you could just point to them yeah which bit just generally, just... Mainly the yeah. fanny, mainly. <laughs> well, the whole area. <laughs> the whole, like, that yeah. and the... Just... 
like an all over feeling of yeah. like. Well, I just love the fact that it's Duh. positioned in such it's positioned in such a way that if you're standing in the street directly in front of it, the arse of the trousers is over Tommy Wiseau's mouth, which I feel is like a perfect juxtaposition. The groin seems to follow you around the street. <laughs>